we're going to be go I'm going to go over with you how to get started on our model of building the quantum mechanical model of the atom or for short our QM model like that we're kind of tend to I'll be calling this the QM model and this is the uh, idea that uh, atoms the electrons fill in spherical orbitals the s orbitals then they start filling in with their p orbitals you get two electrons like this then you'll get two electrons filling in this and then you'll get third one coming out at us then you start filling out the d orbitals i'm not can't draw them all well we're not going to go to the d orbitals we're just staying within p but there's some weird shapes anyway that's a quantum mechanical model look at the notes uh, that i've posted on the shapes of those orbitals anyway First off, we had to, you had to pick an element between 13 and 20 on the periodic table. Do this by group. You had to pick an element that nobody else in your group was doing. Then, the next thing we're gonna do, let me scoot this over here. Turn off the light so we can see it. Let me scoot this over. So you can choose an element with an atomic number between three and eight. Let me zoom this out here a little bit more. Sorry for the uh, kind of the modeling that it comes up on there. So, electrons are going to be black on this model. Of course, this is just the kind of the overview. You'll be cutting them out. You're going to glue on construction paper later on. And then element info will be put onto the construction paper. Let me come back over here to this one. So, when um, you turn this page over, after you pick your element, and if you're absent, you can just pick any one of those there. It won't really matter. Turn over to this page. This is the second page of the packet. And what we've got, we've got our x-axis, we've got the y-axis and the z-axis. Again, the z-axis would be the axis that's coming out towards us. You're going to write the name of your element, the atomic mass, the atomic number, proton, all this stuff. You can fill all this up. You're going to draw a very nice Bohr model of it. Then down here, I'd recommend, I think it's just going to kind of look nicer, is to go through for your element. You're going to put the electron configuration. I'd really like you to do it by putting the arrows on there. And Remember, don't get tripped up. A lot of people see this 2px, 2py, 2pz, and they think, oh my gosh, I don't know what that is. Well, all that is, that just goes back to your off-bow diagram. Let me grab my off-bow diagram here. If I got one, yikes, where is it? Here we go. Remember, on the off-bow diagram, we've got x, y, and z. Um, each of these boxes, uh, suborbitals, represent x, y, and z. And this would be the what the X would look like, and you'd get the Y there, and then the Z coming out towards us. Okay, so don't get tweaked out. It's just you got up to two, two, and two electrons in there. So you're just going to put in just as if you were filling in. In fact, I'd recommend filling this off-bow diagram for your element you're doing. Then you can just put that in there. Anyway, then after you got this information, next time in class we'll get working on it. You'll eventually get these cut out and put in to, to represent your atoms. And don't forget the nucleus. Everybody wants to forget the nucleus. I don't know why they do that. I guess because it's so small and, and we're looking. It's, oh, so here is a finished model. Now, this young lady, um, Allie, when she did hers, she did a pink background. And I'll give you construction paper. You don't have to do a shape. The shapes make them kind of fun. You can do a shape that you have something you're into. If you're into music, you know, do a, do a musical note or a quarter, or a treble clef or whatever they call those. Anyway, so this is what Allie Harrell did couple of years ago. Maybe it was last year. No, I think it was a couple of years ago. And so that was kind of neat, really pretty, and, and it's got, has all those parts on it. Okay, now some people didn't do that. Some people just did this, and then on the back side, those, this section right here, they just very neatly cut this stuff off and put this in there. That works for me. I just want you to be getting a model, and what this represents now, there's our S, 2S, and 3S orbitals. There's one dot, dark dot, that represents the electrons. And if you look on hers, the, there's no dots over here because the the 3pz and the 3py suborbital don't they only have one electron in them so there's that let me show you a few others on here let me turn off the glare here and let me slide this over oh yeah okay this is a slide I've shown for years just remember that um, this is the picture of this little guy this is the after picture he's okay there's no problem with this little guy. Now, here's the before picture. Now, if you got a queasy stomach, you don't want to look at this, okay? At the before picture, when he was in the emergency room with his mom, see the little marks on his nose? Well, that's how they got there, okay? Because he ran with a fork. So I guess what I've shown in class, when we're using scissors, don't run with scissors. Anyway, enough of that. Here's some examples of what some other students have done.
with those. So you just get an idea what they look like. It's, it's always good to know what a finished product should look like. Let me swipe this over, and here's uh, Argon on there. So I'll hide those. So, you, but anyway, so just don't forget the nucleus there. This would since this is a noble gas, it's got all its electrons in there, and that's going to be the project we're working on. There's chlorine sitting there, really nice little model, Bohr model. So anyway, I guess we're I think we're done here. There we. Oh, I got a couple more there. So just to give you an idea what they can look like. And I love that when you do a geometric shape, that just makes it kind of fun. All right, so thank you and good night.